On this edition of Freedom Journal Iraq, we head to Amara, where Iraqi forces clean up the streets and taking care of Iraqi detainees' medical needs. Don't miss these stories and more on today's FJI. Hello, I'm Air Force Sergeant Braden Smith. Welcome to this edition of Freedom Journal Iraq. Iraqi security forces, along with aid from coalition forces, conducted operations in Amara to clean up the area of any arms meant to cause harm to residents, ISF, or coalition forces. The Iraqi-led operation started with the four-day amnesty period, where people could turn in arms and ammunition and not fear legal repercussions. After that, the forces began their searches. Iraqi forces found a total of 117 caches. They found 1,739 mortar rounds, 873 mines, 109 improvised explosive devices, and 445 artillery rounds. Iraqi forces also detained 63 suspected criminals during the operation. The mission couldn't have been a success without the cooperation of the citizens of Amara. Also in the Rashid district of Baghdad, national police and U.S. soldiers discovered large caches consisting of mortar rounds, rocket-propelled grenades, plastic explosives, and rockets. Once caches and militant extremists are pushed out of Iraqi neighborhoods, reconstruction can begin. As the country draws closer to accomplishing this nationwide goal, Airman First Class Michael Williams tells us the government of Iraq is shifting its focus to another goal, the living conditions of Iraqi citizens. The next phase of operations in Iraq centers around economic and social aspects of the country. This means reconstruction projects involving education and health care, as well as upgrades in other standard of living areas as well. Government of Iraq officials have already launched some of these projects in two of Baghdad's roughest areas. In Sadr City and Shola neighborhood, we think that we think this project will have a good economic and social outcome for the citizen. We know there are other areas in Baghdad that need similar service, but we also know that these two places have never received any help. So we'll begin there and they eventually expand our restructions project throughout the rest of Baghdad. Government of Iraq officials and coalition forces are confident these projects will start a new legacy of hope for Baghdad citizens and usher in an era of modern living in Iraq. Airman First Class Michael Williams, Baghdad. More nation rebuilding in Tikrit. U.S. Army engineer units are working together with Iraqi Army engineer units to rebuild the country one brick at a time. The U.S. forces train the Iraqi Army unit so they can eventually do projects by themselves. The Iraqis are trained on equipment they can use to build roads, checkpoints, and enable them to do their own force protection. The Iraqi Army soldiers are taught every other week by different U.S. soldiers to familiarize and make themselves more comfortable with operating the equipment. An essential piece of equipment in Iraq is the Husky, able to clear routes essential for travel. By training the Iraqi engineer team on the Huskies, they'll be among the first units to conduct self-sufficient route clearing operations entirely on their own. U.S. Army engineers ensure that no matter what the equipment is, when their Iraqi counterparts get a mission, they can successfully complete it. Iraqi Army soldiers have already successfully set up roadblocks, filled barriers, and completed bridge construction without assistance from U.S. engineers since training has begun. Coming up, taking care of the medical needs of Iraqi detainees. Here's your raid report. Iraqi National Police seized a cache in the new Baghdad Security District of Eastern Baghdad. A tip from an area resident led them to the cache containing improvised explosive devices and pistols. A tip from an Iraqi citizen led Iraqi army soldiers to a house containing a large cache of weapons in Amara. The cache contained 217 RPGs, 354 blocks of C4, more than 40 explosively formed projectiles, and six surface-to-air missiles. Iraqi security forces detained nine suspected al-Qaeda in Iraq members throughout northern Iraq. Security forces detained five of the suspects at a suspected smuggling safe house in a village northwest of Mosul. U.S. soldiers and Iraqi National Police discovered weapons caches in the Rashid district of Baghdad. The caches contained mortar rounds, RPGs, plastic explosives, and rockets. And that's your raid report. I'm Petty Officer Patrick Dilley. <laughs> Here are the latest Operation Iraqi Freedom headlines. The Council of Representatives opened a liaison office in Erbil, the capital of the Kurdish regional government. The office is intended to establish a stronger link between Kurds and the central government in Baghdad. 
Peace and normality are returning to Basra, but some residents are concerned militants have not given up and are hiding until they can reassert control. The U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom said religious freedom in Iraq is in danger. The group has placed Iraq on its watch list of countries where religious liberties are severely threatened. According to New York Times, some critics say the role U.S. officials played in advising Iraq's oil ministry creates the perception of conflicts of interest. The advisors say their role was limited to narrow guidance on legal issues and Iraq made its own decisions. Those are your headlines from around the region. I'm Airman First Class, Shaylin Jordan. I'm Mike Grove from Dirty Jobs, and you know the question, what can take me or my buddy out of the fight? Today's answer, an 800-pound tire. That's why I'm dressed for the job. Steel-toed boots, coveralls, eye protection, ear protection, gloves, personal protective equipment. Now I'm beyond armed. I'm beyond ready. I own the edge. Guys, what is this thing again? Army medics have one of the most challenging but also rewarding jobs in the military. And while most Army nurses and doctors will be treating their own while deployed, some have a different mission while downrange. Army nurses assigned to Camp Cropper in Baghdad treat detainees on a daily basis, ensuring their health and well-being. Expectations differed among the nurses, but most agree on one thing, quality health care. My expectations um, coming into actually the Army Nurse Corps, I expected to be taking care of U.S. soldiers. I didn't realize the unique populations that we would be taking care of, such as detainees. Um, but it does not change our care at all. We still provide the utmost um, outstanding care, health care in the world, actually, in the Army. Um, so we still treat the patients with dignity and respect, but it's just a different patient population, different illnesses, different diagnoses still provided the exact same excellent care. The dignity and respect the Army nurses give detainees shows the resolve the U.S. has for helping Iraq. Throughout everyone's life, there are significant events that are not to be missed. Anniversaries, birthdays, children's graduation. Unfortunately, when a service member deploy, they deal with the sacrifices of missing these significant occasions. With today's technology, sacrifices don't have to be made. Specialist Justin Cool tells us of one man who got to see his daughter walk across the stage at her high school thousands of miles away. What? There's a little bit of a time delay. Like fathers everywhere, Sergeant First Class David McEwen wants to see his daughter graduate from high school. It's the sort of thing that fathers do, after all. But there is one problem. McEwen is in Iraq, and his daughter is in Dover, New Hampshire. Thanks a lot. That's where the not-for-profit organization Freedom Calls comes in. The broadcast. They help bridge the distance between soldiers and their family. Looks like quite the crowd. For McEwen, what Freedom Calls does is priceless. You can't put a price on something like this. I know my daughter really wanted me there, and you know, for this organization to step up and do this for me and my family, it's priceless. The video teleconference allows McEwen to do more than just watch his daughter's graduation ceremony. He took part in it. McEwen led the audience back home in the Pledge of Allegiance. And they love it. Keeping in contact, extremely hard. And uh, missing key family events like this, very difficult. So, you know, any chance you get where you can fill that gap, it means a lot to both, you know, myself and my family. Leslie McEwen. Sergeant McEwen said he is grateful for the technology that made it all possible. But what this dad will remember most is the smile on his daughter's face from 6,000 miles away. From Camp Victory, Iraq. I'm Specialist Justin Cool. And that wraps up this edition of our program. Be sure to log on to mnf-irock.com, where you can learn all about the progress coalition forces are making throughout the country. If you have story ideas, we'd love to hear them. Just email us at fji at iraq.centcom.mil. From all of us here at AFN and Freedom Journal Iraq, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.